Well, there are more claims that we have one of the worst performing basic education systems in the world, some of the worst schools. The Centre for Development and Enterprise has launched a series of reports on our schooling system. They're calling on the basic education department to come up with measures that will enable our young people to move from the bottom of tables for maths and science. Joined now by the Executive Director at the Centre, Anne Bernstein. And good evening to you. You suggest that there is a silent crisis playing out in our schools. What are you basing that on? What evidence do you have? There's an enormous amount of evidence, Stephen. Um, so if you recall in the President's State of the Nation speech, he talked of a silent revolution when you look at our matric results. But actually, looking at our matric results is very misleading. Those results are massaged, and some 50% of young people who are in grade six do not get to matric, get, do not get through matric in five years. Many drop out, many fail, um, and that is the wrong way to look at our system. We're saying there is no silent revolution. In fact, when South Africans participate in global tests. These are administered by highly reputable bodies, and we're one of the countries that participate. Not all countries do, but of those that do, and these are 50, 60, 80 countries, South Africa consistently comes right at the bottom or in the bottom three when it comes to testing math, science, or reading. So you can be a South African learner, and in grade four, nearly 80% of our learners cannot read for meaning. We think this is a system that's not performing. And Oxford University professor Lance Pritchett, one of the, probably the leading academic analyzing education systems around the world, he says he looked at World Bank data for countries and their per capita income and their education schooling performance, and we are the worst and the performer in the world. I think that's all pretty persuasive evidence. Um, I mean, in the past, we've seen the basic education minister, and as you say, the president claiming there's been a change. They talk about leveling up. We understand there's huge inequality, the worst inequality in our society. This is reflected in our schooling system. From time to time, government officials claim that, you know, learners in poorer areas from poorer schools are beginning to do better. Are you saying that we can't trust that at all? We're saying that if you look at the evidence, of course we have a country with enormous poverty, with great inequality, but we're being beaten in these international tables by other countries that have had a colonial past, a lot of discrimination, poverty, and they're poorer than us. So there's something else going on here that has to do with how we are managing the system. And let me remind you that this is an, an enormous system. It's complex. It's decentralized. We have some 320,000 teachers, 23,000 schools, about 13 million learners. This is one of the biggest and most difficult management challenges in South Africa today. And so, yes, you can find isolated examples of schools that are doing well in poor circumstances, but the fact of the matter is that what is happening in our classrooms is really unsatisfactory. The minister herself says that we have the highest absenteeism rate of teachers in all the SADC countries. Professor Nick Spohr, one of the country's leading education researchers, says four out of five of our teachers do not have the subject knowledge or the teaching skills, the pedagogical skills to teach. So there's something wrong with the system and we have to fix it. As the former Deputy President from Zealand Lumber Nuku put it, former Director for Women for the United Nations as well, we're load-shedding our children. And where do you think things have gone wrong? I mean, in the past we've seen people pulling their hair out over this, often blaming teachers, often blaming one particular teacher's union. It surely isn't as simple as that. There are other factors as well. I think there are a few factors. Firstly, our teachers are struggling and they need more support. So 
how we select teachers, how we train them at university and the standards we hold them to in order to get into the profession, not good enough. Our in teachers in classrooms already, they need more support, but you need to reform the bureaucracy in order to de deliver the kind of quality support that they need. And then we have shortages of teachers, particularly more senior teachers in the harder subjects, math, science, accounting. And we're saying next week we could get foreign skilled teachers with a lot of experience to come and bolster our system while we train more people and train them more effectively. That's one issue, one call. The second cause is this enormous system has very little accountability. So you and I could not come to teach on Mondays and Fridays, or we could have another job if we're a principal or a teacher, but there are no consequences for us. And you might be an excellent teacher coming in five days a week and working really hard, and I'm a useless teacher, and I don't appear very often, but you, you get paid the same, and the, the kind of creeping despondency in that sort of system is a big factor. So that's a second thing, that our, our teachers are struggling and we need to deal with that. The third thing, and here we have a lot of information, because to her credit, the minister in 2014 appointed a task team to look at corruption around principal appointments and teacher appointments. And this task team was headed by Professor John Volmink, who was head of Umalusi at the time. And their findings are devastating, Stephen. They're saying that at that time, and we have no reason to think it has changed, SATU controlled the management, administration, and priorities of at least six, maybe more, of the provincial education department. The minister herself said in 2015 that SATU had a stranglehold, her word, on, edu on our schooling system. Now, the, that's shocking enough. What's even more shocking is that this has been allowed to carry on, and the very practical rep recommendations that the task team proposed to the minister in 2016 on how to deal with corruption, cadre deployment, and the incredibly dominant role of SATU have not been implemented at all, not one. So we think those are three of the big causes of why we have an underperforming system. And the one thing leads to the other. If you've got SATU with too much power in the system and it's hard to tell the difference, between who is the department and who is SATU, because at the time, all deputy directors general in 2016 were active members of SATU. So the interests of the union effectively are running our education system, and that has consequences for how we, we deal with problems in the bureaucracy and support teachers and so on and so on. So... We think those are the major causes of what's going wrong in a very big and complex system. Aaron Bernstein, thank you. Director of the Centre for Development and Enterprise. Very, very sobering statements there, evidence there as well.